Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my newest video. In today's video, we're going to go over how to create face down coasters. This is very popular in my other videos, uh, asking me to make a tutorial on how to do it. So today is finally the day and we're going to go over it. So I have this uh, Tampa Bay Rays logo here that I want to do on a coaster. So what we have to do is we have to convert this JPEG file uh, into an SVG. This works on JPEG and PNG. So we're going to go ahead and open up uh, our web browser and we're going to go to vectorize.ai. It's a website that converts PNG, JPEG to SVG. We're going to drag our image into here. First, it's going to upload then process. This all depends on how long uh, or how complex the image is. Once our image is in here, we're going to click download. Under here, under draw style. What I like to do for something like this is going to be stroke shape outlines. Um, and then what we're going to do is click download. It's going to come up looking like this. So you can see. What you could also do is stroke the edges between shapes once. Hit download and we'll pull that up as well. So it's a little different. They kind of look the same. Um, it just really depends on your project. So what I see is this, the stroke, the edges between shapes once is a lot more, uh, precise or a lot more cleaner. I should say where this one has a lot of missing parts. So that kind of gives you an idea when you're playing with the draw styles on which one fits you. So we're going to go ahead and go with the stroke, the edges between the shapes draw style here. So we'll go ahead and close that of our web browser. We'll go ahead and open up Fusion 360. And what I like to do before I start any type of sketch or anything like that is I click on the front here. It makes us be on the front of this, like our front of our, our drawing plane or whatever you want to call it here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here under solid. We're going to do create sketch and we're going to click on that yellow square. Now we're ready to sketch. Uh, the yellow, uh, I'm sorry, the green line here and the red line across kind of means like center of the sketch plane here. So what we're going to do under the sketch tab is we're going to click on circle diameter, or I'm sorry, center circle, center diameter, diameter circle. Um, wow, I can't talk today. <laughs> we're going to click on it and then we're going to click on the center point here, drag it out. And we're going to type in 95 millimeters. If my keyboard wants to work. All right, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter on our keyboard. Now, uh, what we're going to want to do is take and place our SVG on top of this. So it's on the same sketch. So we do not want to hit finish sketch. Instead, we go up to insert, insert SVG, and then insert from computer. And we're going to locate that file that we just saved from vectorize.ai. Uh, and if I go down here, I know it's going to be dash two because that's my most recent and that's the one we liked. And we're going to go ahead and click open. Now we're going to have to resize this to fit into our circle. So this little square right here, we can actually move our sketch with that. And then this half circle here, we can change the size of it. So we're going to go ahead and fit it into the square the best way uh, to what looks best here. Um, and we can always resize it, make it a little bit bigger. I'm only choosing to go with one outer ring. You could do a second outer ring if you prefer. You could always do that at like 93 or 92 millimeters. You would just hit C on the keyboard and drag it out, just like we did the first one. But this one, I'm just going to do a solid blue. All right. And that looks eyeballish. Pretty, pretty good. Um, everything kind of lines up and looks good right there. Perfect. So we'll hit OK. And you'll notice that there's also a square around it that we didn't make. Uh, sometimes that comes in with the files through vectorize.ai. So before we finish the sketch, we actually want to um, go ahead and trim it up. So we'll hit this little scissors icon here and we'll go ahead and click on the squares or any part that we don't want to be in the sketch. So there we go. Click here. Click down here. And we'll kind of get rid of this here. <laughs> Icon uh, ironically that we're deleting the trademark post on this trademark uh logo on this but uh we won't tell anybody here <laughs> all right there we go it doesn't have to be 100 removed just as long as it's not connecting all right 
and we'll go ahead and hit finish sketch. And now we have our sketch right here. So what we're going to do is select all of it. And we're going to hit E on our keyboard for extrude. It's going to extrude everything in the circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually go back negative four. Because one millimeter of color is plenty uh, to have color on top. And what we're going to do is operation. We're going to change it to new component. And we're going to hit OK. So there we are. That's our solid circle. That's going to be the back of our uh, coaster. So we can go over here to component and name it back. That way in Fusion I can always later down the road if I want to make the back part white or whatever color I want, I can do that. And then uh, Fusion automatically hides the sketches. So what we're going to have to do is go to the sketch and hit the little drop down icon here and the I to review uh, to enable the view of the sketch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sketch it. What I really like is this part white, the TB white, and I like this inner part uh, teal. Um, I saw a logo like that and it looked really, really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the parts we want to be what. So we click once and then hold shift to kind of keep the other uh, selections in one click, if that makes sense. Kind of like selecting multiple files on your computer. You hold shift and click exactly what we're doing here. All right. And now what we're going to do is hit E on our keyboard. And we're going to go up one millimeter. Once we have one millimeter in, our, what we have to do is go to operation every time. And we have to change it to new component. And as you can see, it raised it one millimeter. And now what we're going to do is go over to component and we're going to name that white since that's kind of, we want that to be white. So it helps kind of keep track of everything, especially when you import it in the bamboo slicer, it makes it super easy to color. So now we're going to do the dark blue. So we're going to click, hold shift and click everywhere we, else we want to be dark blue. And we're going to hit E on our keyboard and we're going to go up one millimeter operation, new component, hit okay. And we're going to name that blue. Perfect. Now we have one more color to do. As you can see, there's a difference in color. I really like that. How this is kind of like a dark, dark gray. Uh, and the part that we haven't done yet is kind of like a dark blue. So you can really keep track of what parts you haven't extruded yet. So we're going to go ahead and click every part that's going to be teal. Just like that. Perfect. And we're going to do E on the keyboard for extrude again. And one millimeter. And we're going to go to operation, new component. And hit OK. And that's and we're going to name that teal. All right, now we're done. We got our colors here. And what I like to do is hide the sketch. And I look for any big gaps, just in case I miss something. This really helps me spot any of the gaps. And of course, they'll come out that, like we looked saw before, that dark blue or grayish blue color. So we don't see any of that, so that's fantastic. So what we can do is actually start colorizing, uh, colorizing it and getting an idea of how it's going to look. So we can hit A on our keyboard, and uh, we're going to go ahead and type in, uh, let's start with the blue. So here we do, here we go. We have an anodized, or we have an anodized rough. We'll go with the rough. Um, I don't really like the glossy because more of the matte kind of fits the, the 3D print colors. And what we're going to do is drag, we're actually going to drag this into uh, the back over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click, duplicate, edit, and then we're going to drag this over to the white and hit done. And we're going to drag this over to white. For some reason, it set this as my default, but uh, that's all right. And what we're going to do is hit right click, duplicate, edit. And we're going to change that to the teal. So I'll find a good teal. And I'll drag it to teal. And there we go. So we can actually right click on it if we notice it's not the same color we want. We can hit edit. And you can see in real time it's going to change it. So that's kind of closer to the blue that I have and I'm going to use. There you go. And this is what I was talking about on the back side. So this is why I like to keep the back separate. So let's say later on you're like, ah, I really don't like the dark blue bleeding on the black. It kind of looks kind of plain. Um, you know, I really want to change it to something else. So you can go ahead and take, let's say, a teal and put it on the back. And there you go. You got your two-sided, which actually looks really good. Or you can do the white. 
That's why I like to keep that separate. I mean, that, that actually looks really good. I might even roll with that one when I go to print it. So now we can hit close on the appearance. All right. And what I always like to do is take photos as a reference. I put it into the folder uh, with all my uh, uh, step files and everything for that project. So I can kind of roughly quickly see how that project works. So here I always love to take screenshots. So on Mac and PC, there's always a screenshot uh, function built in. And we'll go ahead and take a screenshot. And so we have reference later. So I really like that white. I'm glad I, uh, I did that. So we're actually going to rock, uh, rock the white back with the dark blue front here on our final version. Once we're done and we're happy with how it looks, we're going to go over here under the browser. Uh, under browse browser, there's going to be a unsaved uh, text right up here and we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to export and what I would like to do is I export it twice once as a step file so that's going to be what bamboo slicer reads and once as the uh, f3d which is the fusion file so, uh, so that way I have a backup of the fusion so I have to, if I have to go in there and make an adjustment I can easily open that up so we're going to name this uh, raise coaster and fusion I always like to add the file extension just if I'm quickly looking and my computer doesn't have ex file extensions view option enabled, I can I know which one's which. And we're gonna hit export. And we're gonna do it one more time. And we're gonna do this one as a step file. So step and export. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and close out of this and we're gonna open up Bamboo Slicer. And I already have my colors picked out for my printer. I already got them in there ready to go. So we're gonna go over here and uh, we're gonna load up our step file. And there's our coaster right there. And you might go, well, it's just white. And uh, you're right, <laughs> we actually have to colorize it. Uh, a lot of people uh, try to color it with the paint bucket. And I did this for the longest time. And it was like pulling my hair out. Trying to get in there and each little thing and color it and it's like, oh, this is a pain, you know, doing this, doing that. So what I like to do is go over here to the objects tab and this is why we name it Infusion. And we do the drop down under Race Coaster. And we have our back, we have our white, and we have our blue, just like it was there. So uh, we, it's already gonna be white. Uh, white back, we kind of decided that in Fusion 360. And our white is already white, so we can leave that the same. So the, for the blue, we can actually right click on it and change filament and do the dark blue. Or we can type in the uh, color that it assigns with. So for teal, I can hit three on my keyboard and it will pick the teal, which is great. I mean, that's super easy. You don't have to do the paint bucket. It takes two seconds. You already have your colors lined out and you're ready to go. Now, what we have to do is we have to lay it face down. So we're gonna click on the uh, object here and we're gonna go up here to lay on face. It's also F on the keyboard. We're gonna click it and we're gonna click right here and it's gonna flip it over just like that. Makes it flat, smooth, and ready to go. So uh, what we can do is actually drag it and uh, put it wherever we want. And we can actually make multiple copies of it. Uh, so here we have four copies. And move our little thing there. And there we go. And we can hit slice on our, uh, on our slicer here and see what it does. So there it is. It looks fantastic. Everything looks perfect. So we know that the uh, 0 0.20 millimeter profile is, works great. However, uh, we see that there's a little overlay here on the white, and we can see that the white's going to print first. So we want to go to prepare and, and just scoot that over a little bit. Another thing I like to do uh, is change the wall generator. So if you go over here under wall generator and change it to arachne, a lot of the face down or light boxes, things like that, arachne is the way to go. Uh, it helps fill in a lot of the gaps. And we'll go ahead and hit slice plate. And there we go. And we can see that's going to take two hours and 28 minutes uh, at a cost of a dollar fifty rough uh, estimate. I mean, that's how when people ask, how do I how do I figure out my cost? You can always go there and then add profit to wherever you see fit. So like coasters, you know, a lot of the coasters go for 15 to 20 dollars and you can see your cost right there. And then it's going to be 10 filament changes at one millimeter. And we can go ahead and hit print and do a bed level. And there we go, we got our colors assigned. And we'll hit send. And that's how you do face down coasters and you get it set up in Bamboo Slicer. I hope you guys enjoy. 
And I hope you can uh, subscribe and leave a like on my video. And uh, share all kinds of cool coasters you guys did. And make sure to check out my Maker World. That's where I upload all my designs. They're free to download. And that helps me out as well. Have a good one.